everyone. Thank you for being patient. Welcome. It's great to see everyone here tonight. Um, so my name is Chad Irvin, if you don't know me. I, um, uh, the Vermont Production Collective sign is gone now, but I am one of the people who runs that. It's a group for filmmakers, uh, Vermont filmmakers, and we an organization that networks, and we also look to put on events to highlight work that are made by local people. In this case, it happens to be work that I did, which is pretty cool. Um, thank you. Wait until after the film to applaud, maybe, <laughs> just in case. Um, but we also uh, have with us tonight the um, Complete Streets Committee. Uh, Holly from the Complete Streets Committee is going to tell us a bit about what they've been working on to improve uh, pedestrian and bikeability here in our town, I think. Is that right? Is there? Holly, there you go. <laughs> yeah, come on up. Okay. Super nice and informal. That's the oh, only yeah. way I know to do it. Uh, I love this. Thanks so much. We have our number one fan right here. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Kristen and Chad, for the opportunity to include Complete Streets. And I know Jen is here from Onion River Outdoors, and we have a number of representatives even from the committee um, for Sustainable Montpelier and some of the other sponsors of the evening. Um, my name is Holly Fowler, but I'm joined as well by Nancy Schultz. The, I have bright lights in my eyes, so I can't really see where everyone is, but David Ori is here, Hanif Nazarelli, um, Susan Glasso from Local Motion, who's a very important statewide partner to all of the complete, complete streets committees in the state. John Kim, Scott Richardson, Brett Appel. Did I miss anyone? And we have a couple of representatives, Merrick um, Moden and Stephen Page, who aren't here. But uh, complete streets, what are they? Uh, they are basically a design um, planning concept for creating and maintaining streets that are inclusive and safe for all users. So that is people who walk, use mobility devices, cyclists, public transportation, and our automobile drivers out there as well. Um, Complete Streets Montpelier has been active since 2016. I'm looking at Nancy to keep my statistics right. And we do events, outreach, and education to raise awareness about Complete Streets. And some of the initiatives that you may have heard of are um, the Be Bright at Night campaign. So that's coming up this fall, uh, where we help to promote folks wearing lights and being seen at night, especially as it starts to get dark. Um, connecting our recreation path soon with the two-way uh, bike path on Berry Street. Um, we've been partnering with Sustainable Montpelier for the e-bike lending program. Um, and we're planning a bike rodeo uh, to help those cyclists when everyone's trying to get out in the spring. Uh, we're gonna do that in the spring. Um, so lots of things are happening. Uh, we're gaining some momentum, I think, now. Uh, and uh, we always love new voices in the conversation. We meet the first Wednesday of every month at the Memorial Room in City Hall at 5.30. Um, all are always welcome. And we also have a virtual option on Zoom. So. We're here, um, you know, part of Complete Streets is born out of the fact that we've had rising numbers of pedestrian accidents um, over the years, and I think we're going to see and learn a lot more about that in this film. Um, so again, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and we look forward to um, meeting and hearing more from all of you about your reaction to the film and possibly at a future Complete Streets meeting. So thanks. Okay, and uh, I guess we'll go ahead. It's nice and dark enough to get this started, hopefully before it gets too cold on us tonight. All right. Really happy that we have representatives from the Complete Streets Committee here tonight and that they spoke to us a little bit. And we would invite anyone, if you guys have any questions either about the film or about just street design here locally in general if you guys have any concerns to to start a conversation you know we have people here who are, are better equipped to talk about th that sort of thing than i am but if there's anything that you guys wanted to bring up um you know we have the right people here <laughs> to to listen okay. was, was there was there going to be anyone 
any other little thing, or are we? I, I, I don't. I don't okay. <laughs> okay. Instead, so we say okay. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. Um, <laughs> um, if there's, if anyone had anything else to say, we would, we would definitely welcome you guys to come up here and. Okay. You can have the microphone. Yes, yeah, so you can have the microphone because it's hard to hear without it. Oh yeah, please come up, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Um, I just wanted to mention I have some handouts tonight that our committee prepared, and they're on um, specifically night safety for drivers, for bicyclists, and for pedestrians. I have about a dozen. Um, tried to make more, but there were some complications with the copier. So you're welcome to have one, and if you don't get one tonight, I can arrange to get you one in the future. And I don't know about you, but I found the movie very inspiring. The things that they're doing in big cities, we have a tiny city. We could do more to make our streets safer for bicyclists and pedestrians. And I love the green paint. You know, Montpelier did a little bit of that, but it hasn't, th we haven't freshened it up lately. And I'm thinking of the intersection of state and Maine, and certain places uh, could, could use, I, I forget the technical name for it, but it's a green box, basically, that uh, uh, places makes an indication of where cyclists should position themselves at a light. It's like, this is a space for you that's safe. I would love to see that at that intersection as one example. And um, our, our um, shadows and things have faded. They need to be repainted. We need more parking meter hitches for designated cycle parking. And um, I would love to see Langdon Street become an open street even if it was one day a week on Sunday when stores aren't open and there wouldn't be so much pressure to have cars on that street. I mean, there's a lot we can do. So if you feel the same way, I hope you'll be in touch with the Complete Streets Committee and, and share your ideas. Thanks. Hi, um, Elizabeth Parker. And um, I'm on the Montpelier Transportation Infrastructure Committee um, with Hanif, who's also on Complete Streets. And um, we drafted a new transportation plan for Montpelier, which then went through our committee and through the planning department, and got majorly altered. I do encourage you to look at it. Um, you know, we have had, unfortunately, a pedestrian death uh, in, in front of Shaw's on the other side of the street a couple of years ago. We've had a number of pedestrians who've been um, hit in crosswalks. So we are not exempt from the um, challenges that were discussed in this movie. Uh, it's really pretty serious. And um, that's my, you know, my gloom and doom side. The thing I'd like to say is that I am encouraged because since COVID, we have a lot more people bicycling. There are a lot more um, parents with children with cargo bikes. There are a lot more people commuting to work. Um, we know that the recreation demand has gone up. And, and so that's exciting. But how we, um, as Nancy was discussing, how we mark our streets to help move us in the direction of a really um, zero death, zero accident um, city is hugely important. So I encourage you to um, you know, read the transportation section of the city plan, make comments on it still, and get involved in Antic or in Complete Streets. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I just have a question. I'm not a presenter. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm just a bicyclist. And I have two questions. One is, how do we deal with situations where you are going from one city to another? Because I feel like right here in downtown Montpelier is not the worst. The worst is trying to get from Montpelier to Barrie, or Montpelier to Middlesex, or Montpelier to Worcester on a bicycle, or even just a little bit outside of Montpelier. Like Main Street is maybe kind of sort of OK here, but if you keep going past the library and start going up the hill, then there's no shoulder, no protection, no green paint, no slow, no sharrows, nothing. You're on your own, and there's no shoulder. Um, so that's that's a question. How do you how do you deal with things once you start getting a little bit outside of the core of Montpelier? 
question number one. Question number two, um, why, why is, did I understand you to say that the, you said the city planning department altered it, and I assume you mean they made it better, but it, you may have possibly meant they made it worse, and I'm not sure why they would do that. Like, how does this work? How do we advocate, and who is, like, why do they have the right to do that? Like, I don't, I didn't see, even in Phoenix, they didn't have a planning department that was an intermediary between the citizens who said, we want safer streets, and then watering it down and then presenting it to the city council. Why is that, why do we allow that? Okay. And to the first point, do we have anyone who might be able to speak to that? <laughs> I know that I'm also afraid to ride very far out, out of uh, the downtown area uh, also. You know. I, I think it's really um, a VTRANS issue um, because some of the roads that you're talking about are um, basically um, supervised by the state. And I know that there are a number of people working uh, at VTRANS who are um, in charge of the marking of um, the roads. I, my greatest anxiety is um, I like to go up to the reservoir. However, it's really scary. Um, just before the, the boat landing, there's a metal on a curve, and I have been boxed in many times, so that's uh, a scary point. Uh, with regard to the transportation plan, I think there is a great confusion um, about what capacity we have and what our finances are and where we should put our finances um, and uh, you know how we should spend city money on making um, innovations and um, uh, you know doing the, the work that's necessary to make biking more safe so that's where your advocacy advocacy comes into play yes thank you Come on up, have a turn. Thank you. Hi, um, so my name is Susan, Susan Grasso and I'm the newest employee at Local Motion. So I've only been there for just two weeks now. Um, but I just wanted to um, comment on this issue of rural roads, um, which is really a tricky um, situation. Most of my experience has been in uh, cities um, and, and larger towns. So I know that is a topic that local motion is really thinking about. Unfortunately, I haven't been there long enough to really give you a lot of um, information about that. But I do know that you know when we talk about traffic safety, I think it's something like 80% of crashes um, take place or fatalities um, are take place on our rural roads. So it's a real a real concern in Vermont. Um, and I also know that there are some communities, you know, where there are people who are trying to jog or walk or ride bikes uh, on their local roads in their community are asking their public works department to look at, you know, giving a little bit more shoulder so that there's a little bit more space for them and doing some striping. Um, I'm not, I don't know the data on that, how, you know, how that affects, for example, traffic speed uh, or accident uh, crash rates. But um, I know that is something that's being done in some places in Vermont. So I just wanted to share, share that. And please feel free to contact me if you have any questions, because I, if I don't know the answer, I'll know some people there to, to ask. So it's really great to be here. And I'm excited to work with your community and do what I can to support um, the things that you want to do here. So thanks. Susan, can you tell people what local motion, local motion is in case we haven't? Oh, um, if you're not familiar with local motion, local motion is Vermont's statewide bicycle and pedestrian advocacy group. So we do several different things. Um, I'm part of a program that helps, helps support complete streets and communities. So we work with uh, community groups um, in cities and towns throughout the state. Um, but we also do other things. We have a program that works on safe routes to school. So schools in Vermont can be part of a safe routes to school program and get support uh, from Locomotion, where they, we have a bike trailers that can bring bikes to schools and do a bike education training and skills training um, in schools. We have an e-bike lending program, which I know you guys have one here, so uh, you're probably familiar with that. 
Um, and we do, you know, basic uh, education, um, learning events. We'll put on webinars on different topics. If there are topics that you're interested in learning more about, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're always looking for um, uh, different ideas, understanding what it is that you want to know more about, and then we can, if we don't know, we can bring experts in. We can do, um, have different speakers and do different events to, to help us all um, you know, move forward in, in uh, learning about how we can make our streets safer for people who walk and bike. So, thanks. Is anyone else? One other thing, that it's sort of funny watching these films. Uh, I, last I worked on this was probably like a year ago. So I, I haven't seen it in a really long time. So it's a little bit nerve wracking. Um, but it sort of speaks to the last eight months I've been working on a project that's about the decline in civic engagement across America. And so one thing that I would say at, relative to, without diving into too much uh, this thing that I'm thinking about constantly now that will be out next year, and hopefully we'll have a screening for that, um, is how to uh, help with these things is be involved, show up at council meetings, uh, talk to the Complete Streets Committee. You know, these small things that we can do uh, will help and, and show that there's a, a desire for things like this. Um, and so that's all I will pitch on, on that film, Join or Die, coming next year. Uh, we have one more person. Do you want to come oh, yeah. up? right up here. Very right. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have a question. Um, I'm a bicyclist and um, I often commute to and from work, which is in Middlesex. So I'm doing exactly what we were just talking about, like riding uh, outside of Montpelier. Um, but I also ride around town a lot. And I'm just noticing that like, as people are talking about what we're doing in Vermont to improve things. Like I keep hearing about like improving like the painting of the lanes and stuff, but what was in this documentary and what I've read and heard other places when I research this is that that's actually not very effective and that we need like more than that. And so I'm just wondering if anybody, like if any of the groups working on this are thinking about like looking at some of these solutions that actually how, you know, provide like bike lanes that are separated in some way from the traffic or things that might um, might do more than just painting. And I, you know, I understand like that we have to start somewhere, but I also think like as a bicyclist, I just want, I want the goals to be like for what we really need, not just for like a Band-Aid solution. So anybody, if anybody has any comment on that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hanif, I'm on the Complete Streets Committee. Um, this committee has actually been trying to get a two-way bike way on Barry Street. And the idea is to connect the shared use path, which is getting so much more use um, in these last 18 months. Um, so to connect the, or to bridge the gap from shores along Barry Street to where you can connect with the shared use path along stone cutters. So that's one very concrete um, proposal, and we were hoping that that would be implemented this summer. But we're struggling a little bit. The city's having difficulties with the line painting. But actually, the materials are in place for an interim solution. So it would just require converting the parking spaces, about 13 parking spaces, from the intersection at Main Street up to the rec center, senior center. Um, so it's not a big, n not a very long stretch. And that would basically make a complete um, shared use path all the way from the Dog River Road, you know, close to the Amtrak station, right the way across town. And now it's extending along Old Country Road and thanks to the Cross Vermont Trail, linking up practically all the way to East Montpelier. So we do have like a connection going out of Montpelier that's... Sorry? 
Yeah, so the Barry Street bikeway, the idea is to have it protected uh, bikeway. And it's an interim solution because there is already a plan and there is funding which hopefully will come through in 2023 to actually make a proper shared use path, meaning a pedestrians and bike uh, path like the rest of the shared use path that's separated on Barry Street, that's separated from uh, the, the, um, the asphalt roads. So that's one really, really great asset that we have in Montpelier. It's an east-west uh, shared use path. Now, I'll just refer to um, a study and a plan that was made in 2012 called Montpelier in Motion. So that's more than well, some 10 years ago. Um, there was a, a, a big study that would basically came up with the proposal that we should then prioritize a north-south shared use path, a safe way to cross this city going north to south. So from you know, the north, either from National Life Group and Northfield Street coming down through town, hopefully crossing the east-west uh, shared use path and perhaps going out along Elm Street. So we would have another way out of town that would have uh, focused attention and resources to at least give a safe, protected bikeway or shared use path um, going north-south. So those are the plans that were made 10 years ago and I would encourage, as Chad has said, for us to get more engaged with our city and uh, all of the ways that we have to advocate for that to actually happen. Okay. My question actually to you, um, Chris, Chris and Chad, is are there gonna be more screenings? Um, well, the film is actually, it's on uh, Amazon now, uh, streaming, and I think they're, PBS International is distributed. I think that's just outside of the US though. Um, so I don't know that we have any more screenings planned right now, um, but I'll have to check with Jennifer, the br director producer is, is gallivanting around in Italy right now. So <laughs> we could be jealous of her. One of the other things I was, it was fun remembering watching the film that I co-wrote <laughs> was that, uh, the, the, that you could have one thing is, is that solutions don't have to be perfect and permanent. You can put up something and see how it works and then you can make it more permanent later. The other thing is the city, even older cities that were designed pre-pedestrian uh, automobile uh, with smaller streetways, you know, like Copenhagen, we would think, oh, it's, it was made that way always. And, and we saw in the film, they had to rebuild the city back to be being more bike friendly again, which, What's fun for me, relearning for like the 50th time. Thank you, great movie. I am um, excited to chat afterwards. I wanted to share a national advocacy resource. Um, I work at a national nonprofit called Smart Growth America. I've met a couple of the Complete Streets folks um, because we also run a Complete Streets Coalition. And I'm sure you came across this researching for the film. We do a report every year called Dangerous by Design that looks at the statistics of pedestrian deaths in industry state by state. And something that I wanted to share is, um, you know, while there's been tremendous advocacy successes over the past few years, which are really inspiring, the stats are getting worse and worse. And especially during the pandemic where there were more people on the road and fewer cars that were driving therefore faster, you know, the, the stats were terrible over the past year. So, you know, there's just such a need for advocacy. And so, you know, wanted to thank you to, to have the film as another tool for people to, you know, get inspired to make a change. So, yeah, thank you. And I'm happy to, um, you know, I can share the, I'm sure the coalition members know the report. Um, if anyone wants, wants to get the link, I'll be around over here, so. Thank you, that's, that's a good, very good point. Anyone else? Sure, everyone is freezing by now. <laughs> well, I think, thank you guys again. Oh, where? Right here. Here. Well, I, I just wanted to mention, um, I've been biking pretty straight year round for about seven years. Um, but um, I did get hit by, I was hit twice. Um, once in Randolph and 
once in um, Montpelier here, and I was actually hit pushing my bike either through a crosswalk or on a sidewalk. So that is really freaky. And um, I am, for all the things that we're talking about and the bike safety, everything, but I also think there's got to be some way to also approach um, the driving population um, to be more, to help them understand um, the whole biking thing. Um, it, it's pretty freaky. Um, luckily, I didn't get hurt. Um, the car that hit me and ran, hit my bike and ran off, hit my bike and knocked it out of my hands. And I, uh, the person slowed down <clears throat> and said, are you all right? And I said, yeah, but you got to pay for the bike because it was in the roadway. And they drove off and <laughs> everybody got their license plate though. And then the other time I was pushing my bike up Northfield Street and <laughs> a van came by me and was so close it, it hit my arm. But anyways, I'm just thinking, it's really wonderful to think about all the great things we can do on the bicycle end of it. And then too, I think we have to think about how can we make this uh, more knowledgeable for drivers. And unfortunately, I'll be getting a car soon. <laughs> but I'm even scared being out driving. And I just wanna you know, make it a really good effort for everyone, you know, drivers and bikers bicyclists. So I hope you understand what I'm saying because I'm not very good at explaining it. But yeah, some public service for drivers too. Because um, they get really frustrated. I understand that. So just trying to look at that aspect too. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I think that I, I, statistically, I think that I'm not the statistics person. I'm the how do we tell this story in an entertaining way story, uh, person. Um, but I think that there's like a threshold of the amount of bicycles on the street that uh, heightens the awareness for drivers. And I think that it's interesting that you, uh, by mentioning that, someone else talked about the challenges in rural areas. So how are you going to get that threshold of the amount of bicycles on the street to heighten the awareness of drivers the way that they have in Copenhagen? You know, it's easy to be aware of bikes because they're everywhere, you know. But thank you for sharing that. It was very... It's a very good point that the, the drivers need to be involved too. It's not bicycles versus cars or bicycles or cars. It's us together. Yeah. And thanks again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and thanks for the great feedback and questions and everything too. Thank you all.